Hello, welcome to a new season of the Expert 11 Road to Glory series. In the last episode, we saw out the season against Gianni Verde, having already won promotion to Division 2. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at our Division 2 opponents. As you can see here, this is what the squad now looks like post change reports, with a few couple of new additions to this side, which we'll be going over now. Feel free to pause the video if you have not seen all of the new player skill values. Our first new signing is Youth Academy graduate 16 year old striker Ian May. 16 2 striker with the greedy SQ, also a stamina and penalty taking, which makes him a cool asset for us here so far. He will take Reginald Lacey's place in the squad. And having been unable to sack Lacey, well, if you remember at the end of one episode, we said that Shark United had shown some interest. So we put Lacey on the market to try and sell him to Shark United. I wonder how that one will pan out. Our second new signing is Oliver Wan, a 17 year old defender who is also a free kick specialist with heading as well. So great asset to have there for us. Oliver Wan is not particularly highly skilled though, he's only three bars at 17 years of age. But with Ledley King set to retire, we do need another defender in this team when Devon Riley takes over that starting spot. So Oliver Wan will be a useful player to have around for a few seasons anyway. He will also assist in trying to give us more cash over time. We're getting to the point though where we're going to need a lot of money to compete season in, season out. Therefore, it is vital that we consider shifting Oliver Wan in a few seasons' time, hopefully after his double jumps. So he will be incorporated as part of our first team squad. So, without further ado, let's find out who our opponents are for season 39 of the Ultimate League. First up, perhaps the biggest club in this division. This is AC Samba, and they are former Ultimate League champions. When they won the Ultimate League, Knights didn't even exist. Knights were founded the season off season after AC Samba won the title. Now, both clubs will meet in the same division as each other. It's been a long, long time since AC Samba won the title, to be fair. Almost 13 seasons, to be exact. But it goes without saying that since they have won the Ultimate League before and still have the same manager in charge, they're going to be a very, very difficult team to beat. Quite a few of these players have played in the Ultimate League top flights, although to be fair, their starters aren't really the ones that were part of the Ultimate League title winning team of season 26 as regular starters. But the likes of Todd Potter, Ronnie Cruz, Emiliano Milhaira, Russell Lozardo, Ian Robin, Priest Song, and Renault Tedesco were all parts of Ultimate League sides who played in the top flight for many seasons until AC Samba's relegation in season 32. Lionel Rodriguez too for that matter, and they have a very strong spine with three 17 bar players. Suffice to say that's a bit of an upgrade on Stretford Enders who we played against last season. The key players of this team are the reserves from their time in the top flight. Our second opponent is FC Dragos, Portuguese side from Lisbon, of a former Division 1 side for three seasons, so they know what they're doing to be fair. They may not have ultimately made it up to the Ultimate League top flight, but they have some pretty good quality in their side to make up for that fact. 120 million value squad is one of the better ones in this division, so it's not going to be an easy game against them whatsoever. One of the main reasons why that is, is their goalkeeper Valerie Karatic. The 18 bar goalkeeper, who's also pretty good at king in the air, is a real threat that we have to be wary of. Added to that, they also have two 15 bar midfielders in Pavel Oliveira and Jose Pedro Favas, although Favas is injured at the moment and may make a slow start of the results. On top of that, they have a 14 bar intelligent midfielder Martin Gomez, and up front, they just, just have David Capello's 24 10, so a bit lacking in that department. But still, they are strong all around. They narrowly missed out on the playoffs last season, so make no mistake, these guys are a real threat. Our third opponents are Irmaus Unidos. I may have mispronounced that, but and I'll probably continue to mispronounce that throughout the entire season, but these are the winners of Division 3F last season, the division that was right next to ours. So, like us, they have come up to this division for the first time, and this is their debut at this level. They have a squad value of 91 million, but that's not too... Lack of trying, really, because they have a pretty decent squad, to be fair. A range of 14 and 13 bar players, and they had the highest rating in Division 3 last season for much of the season. So, they are a pretty tough squad to face. We will have, probably have to work cut out, but they should be manageable against us, since they are probably slightly stronger than us, but 
I would imagine not too strong that we can't compete with them. Our next opponent is the strongest team in this division, Lotus FC. Well, strongest squad anyway, a 13 bar squad is colossal to say the least. A bit like Diallo Verde last season actually, they even got the same first choice strip colour of green. But it's a bit on the old side. Their goalkeeper Fraser Lifko is 36 years of age. So although he is a very strong 16 bars worth of skill, average age could count against Lotus for their ultimate potential. But they have some good players, so let's not rule them out as a potential threat. You may have noticed so far that all the teams that we have previewed so far are stronger than us. This doesn't bode well to be fair, but hopefully this next team will be one we can beat. Sport Lisbon Benfica are our next opponents, and these guys actually have some, some interesting pedigree. They are a former top flight Ultimate League side themselves. They were in the top flight in and out for about a four season period, and they also reached the cup final while trying to do the double. They ultimately lost out the final and never won the cup, but they have stuck around in the upper echelons of the Ultimate League ever since then, with the rem remnants of the team that their previous manager Kajmak left behind. Kajmak has subsequently started again with his new side, FK Varda. And this side were FK Varda under his regime, but are now Sport Lisbon Benfica under the management of the current manager. They came out through the playoffs, but it was a pretty bad time as they only actually have three defenders left in their squad. Okay, the defence looks pretty solid with Carsten Holm Hansen, the goalkeeper, Jira Party, Ronnie Beckman, and Michel Habas in defence. And I'm sure there'll be a pun that I'll eventually do about this, that party name. Elsewhere, things start to look a bit slim. Mick Compton and Five and Nathan Finney is a strong three-man midfield there, but they don't really have a lot of striking quality up there, and their midfield is somewhat lacking because they have to play two youths. Especially Philip Lam and Silvio Alves will be favourites, although Renato Sanchez and Juan Harango will probably also get a shout too. Lewandowski and Gregor Kerner will probably be the front two as the strongest two strikers in their team. The next opponent is Sporting De Quinta, banished by Jackson, a Sporting Lisbon fan by the looks of things. Another Portuguese manager, that's another one in this division. Really, this division seems to be full of Portuguese managers. We've only ever seen one other English manager so far. Sporting De Quinta were in Division 1 last season but got relegated. So they really know their stuff, considering if you look at their squad, it doesn't appear to be too strong apart from midfield, where they have a very really solid midfield three of Augusto Mercury, Bento Becker and Miguel Castella. Their goalkeeper Adorito Toro is the same age and skill as Ant Connolly, which is quite interesting. Defence, they're probably going to be a three-man defence because otherwise they don't have a really lot of defence and strength with only Paredes and Lagarito of a decent strength whatsoever. Up front, Adam Arrayel and Justino Jacome look like the front two, so yeah, this is looking like a very solid 3-5-2 team. Finally, we have Taunton Town FC. Now, this should be a familiar opponent to you because we have already played Taunton Town six times before. That isn't too much of a comfort though because we have never beaten Taunton Town before, so they're going to really be a challenge for us. If we can get wins against them, we might be able to stay up in this division, or maybe even better, we might end up challenging for a promotion. But... Given how strong everyone is so far, that might be a bit of a way off. Taunton squad is aging a bit now. It's mostly the same one as we faced last time we played with Water Shams men. The big difference is that Percival Halliday has retired. Raphael Hoffland, Richard Brune, and Alexander Com are all first team quality and maybe used as average age make weights by Watty, although he may still end up playing his strongest side. We'll see how things go, but if you can adapt to that, he'll be a threat. If he's too old, then it might count against him in the long run of this season. We'll see how things go. The last time we met Taunton Town in the league was way back in season 32, back when both teams were in Division 5. Fair to say both have progressed a fair bit since then. Taunton Town have been somewhat ahead of Knights in progression so far, but because of that we have met in the cup a few times during the intervals between our last league meeting. We've already played them four times before in the cup and hopefully we can finally be able to beat Watty's men and show how much we've grown as a team. So, this is how the first round of fixtures line up in this division. Sport Lisbon Benfica are at home to Taunton Town. I imagine Taunton will probably win that one. We are away to FC Dragos in our first game. A really, really difficult match to start the new season off. Lotus FC against AC Samba, so interesting to see how that one plays out. Lotus have a very strong squad, but I imagine that AC Samba will probably have a good amount of strength for themselves and tactics to be able to see off Lotus. 
Sporting de Quinta against Imas Unidos. So interesting to see how that one also pans out. Anyway, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be away to FC Dragos. Suffice to say, this is going to be a really, really, really difficult division. And we're going to have to fight for every point we want to get in this division. <laughs>